Yes, there is. Well, let's see if we can just get it on the way here. It's going to be Godsent on the CT side, Astralis on the T side, and this is a best of three to decide who is going to be going home and who will get another chance. It's a straight execute into the A-bomb side. They are actually getting... Oh, he catches him. Lucky goes down. Vartin with the kill, Lado taking down Dupree, and just like that, it's a three on three. A glaive inside of the bomb site. That smoke, oh, I actually felt, I thought for a minute it fell down, but it actually did land up at the heaven. That's gonna make it tricky. Tacos dropped by Megisk, and glaive, burst fire at close range, trying to get that shot, but not quite connecting. They have to go quick here to try and get the retake. Already tagged Sip with the kill, and that leaves Justu Mao on his own. He will drop to Sip as well. A good double for him, and a good double for Megisk, and that will be Astralis winning the pistol round at least and wiping the sweat off their brow because that quick flank through when Lucky goes yeah. down, you're just thinking, crap, now we're in a box. We need to get this bomb planted right now and worry about which flank they're going to try and press in on us for. But I like that Astralis, they don't like to play it slow. They set the pace early. They say, right, we're not going to waste any time here. We're going to go for a quick execute out onto A, get the jitters out of the way as well, and just get into this match. And so I like that approach from Astralis. There is a little bit of an element of nerves here involved with Lucky, and we're going to see if he's uh, capable of ironing that out and bringing the level. But, you know, Astralis not wasting any time. Similar. I, this is the throwback major. He's bought a Mac 7 Hell yeah. on Nuke. Let's go. Brilliant. I, I love it. Specifically it's, in this position. This exactly. Is the, this is the quintessential spot. It is. Homage to uh, to Snacks and, and maybe to JW as well. Yeah. Good times. Let's see if it's actually going to be any use. Phelps not hitting the shot, Dumao not hitting it either, and they, you only get so many chances. They're going to be coming for you with the Mac 10s. Taco is going to get a double kill, taking down Dupree and Sip, and that is not bad. There's oh. the Mac 7. Barton able to take down Megis. It's a two on two, and they have a pretty good shot at doing this right now. Plenty of time for Astralis to look for the kills, but Lucky's already low on health. Good shot from Glaive. That one was needed. Oh. And now Galil's been picked up. He's jettisoned the Mac 7, unfortunately. It's, I don't know, it's hard to say. Obviously, Astralis should be favored here. I'm glad they're calling the freeze, because if they rush to get the bomb down, and when that bomb is being mm -hmm. planted, it's sort of technically a one-on-one. -on -one. So don't rush it when you've got 40 seconds. Just wait it out and see. And eventually, obviously, they're going to have to go for it. That's the thing Taco, I guess, feel in the moment there. That's what, that's where I was wondering, why does he keep peeking? Why does he keep peeking? Because if it's a two-on-two, -two, like you just pointed out, Anders, as soon as that bomb gets planted, it's a two-on-one. You yeah. have an advantage. And so Taco taking those fights there, I wonder if he was just trying to feel the moment, if he felt like he could hit that headshot. But uh, that has worked a bit against uh, Barton now. Glaive tries to go for the fight. Oh, this is a problem. Oh, man, that could have been dangerous. Glaive saving the team. Triple kill for him. Astralis really having to fight for that round. Maybe more than maybe more than could be expected, but mm -hmm. it just worked out in the favor of God. The, the double kill for Taco with the Deagle made a huge difference. Expensive round as well there for Astralis, but uh, they'll, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. They have this round now to kind of build up on that because that was a force buy after all for Godsend. So now Godsend are going to be on the hard eco. Not even any HEs or anything clever getting thrown in here by Godsend. They are really just going to try and prioritize the next round so they can get maximum number of nades in their buy round. So I appreciate this. I really like this from Godsent. Just going to try and make it as strong as possible the following round. And not really give a chance here for Astralis to break their economy or do anything crazy. Astralis, <laughs> you know, Megas is leading the way with the MAC-10. Yeah, that's the luxury of having it. I mean, it's it's just, it feels so good because it's so risk-free. Oh, and he checks the corner anyway. Not bad. But even if he goes down to, the, to, to Lado in the follow-up, mm. who cares really? Probably not going to be a big deal. It's just about finding the information, and you can see that's why he's so mobile. He's just, he's everywhere, checking everything all at once. It doesn't really matter. He's going to find an oh. ace in the follow up round with a MAC 10. That is rare. All of the MAC 10 kills as well. Dude, that's so much money he's into the rich. coffers for Vegas. That's Unbelievably sick. rich. That is sick. Yep. Now he's got good money. He can I drop can't. that AWV for Lucky if he wants, or just be able to even, you know, buy multiple rifles in the following one. Oh, they just stacked up for him. <laughs> it's like the most luck expended in one. He's like, I'm going to find every single one of them in mini. That's well, so well. good. Yeah, well, well. But now let's see here. As it is going to be the big buy round coming up. Doom, I was going to get that uh, AWP. And what we lose to Astralis players already right out the gate. Saw this happen earlier as well with FaZe. So hopefully this is something that can get ironed out quickly now that the admins know what they're dealing with. Yeah, presumably, yes. Um, hopefully, hopefully. Good times. Uh, that really sucks because obviously Astralis, you want to just kind of keep this momentum going. You just got a big pop-off round from Megisk. 
uh, a nice clean 3-0 to start off your nuke and fast rounds as well. So you've set a certain tone, a certain pace, and now that's all just going to kind of bleed away here as gods didn't get time to just sit and breathe, right? They get to, yep, they get to think about this upcoming round a little bit more. And um, I don't know, I did, so far this map is not playing out like the two nukes that we saw yesterday that were both very slow and very sort of, you know, walking around. A lot of it was really waiting uh, just for, to, to see. I mean, down below 40 seconds almost every single round. This is so far a little bit quicker. Wonder if it's going to stay that way or if Ast Astralis will be forced to, to slow it down themselves. But And they were also incredibly CT-sided nukes yesterday that we saw. It's been played so much nuke uh, in the major so far. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's almost every round, it seems. The well, you got a lot of, we've had a lot of Danish teams playing. Yeah. And Danes love nuke. And uh, it's also just been one of those maps, I think, that's kind of figured out right now in terms of the meta. People are comfortable on it. They have an idea of what the game plan is. They have, they have an idea of what the meta is on Nuke. And so it's, uh, let's say it's one of those maps that's less fluky and more planned out. Yeah. It's le you have less chance of getting blown up on Nuke. And to be fair, we, we thought we saw some teams going to get blown up yesterday, and then all of a sudden they were able to pull off, you know, 13-2 comebacks <laughs> on Nuke. So uh, we were taking a stroll down memory lane yesterday, Anders, having some real OG Nuke play on the CT side. I, I feel like most teams feel like they can get they can get away with it on Nuke. It's a little bit more measured out. Yeah, I agree. Should, that should be how it plays, but um, I don't know. It's the major. Everything is different. That's generally how it plays, right? Everything just feels different. Oh, yeah. And... Um, you notice now the players, you know, it's a bit more, it's a feeling a little bit more like a land. They've taken that next step now where they're a bit more, they're in an auditorium, it looks like, where they actually have, you know, yeah. they're, they're sitting side by side, they're fist bumping, they've got cameras in their faces. That's the next step up where it's not just the webcams anymore that you got used to for the past year and a half. Now you actually have the cameraman there with the camera in your face, 10 inches away, <laughs> right at the end of the round. That's a different feel. And, you know, players like Lucky, that's why we, we put a lot of emphasis on him. He doesn't necessarily have that experience at all. I mean, anecdote, but uh, he was saying uh, <laughs> first land where he was just like, do I need to bring my PC? Is that is that what needs to happen here? You know, <laughs> like that's the kind of questions this guy was asking going into the land where he's like, ah, you know, what do I need? No, you don't. You that's don't fine. need to bring your PC. PGL have got you covered. And uh, while well, Astralis, you know, now they're live with the round. And let's see, can they keep this going? Back into the action. Fourth round coming up. And the first real buy round from Godsend. So let's see what they've got. Dumao has got the AWP. He took a shot there through the squeak door, but didn't really connect with anyone. Meg is playing into the smoke out here and actually trying to play the edge of it. Do you want to go through? It's a risk for sure. Oh, the timing. If he was one second earlier, well, he's going to find it anyway against Phelps. And that kind of lurking around the smoke. That is so hard to deal with on the CT side. He almost could have had that one. Actually, he's not that far away from spotting out Taco. Taco, feeling very lonesome for backup in here. Oh, but he Hansel, handled it so well. What a double kill from Taco. And they're just spending all of their time and attention on it. Dumao comes in for the kill. Taco play this round so un... But they should win this right now. Taco's given it to them. Yes, he has. I mean, talk about an overperformance from Taco. And to be fair, Taco, he's on that redemption arc. Like I said, going into this match, he's been standing out on an individual level. He's been hitting pretty hard for Godsent. Granted, they haven't been winning their matches, but he's still out there getting kills. So glad to see that he's still, you know, kind of trying to maintain that level here against Astralis where he can take a fight straight up with Magus and he can win that fight. And he, there was no other choice, right? He, he, as soon as he sees Magus coming in from hell like that, he knows... I'm trapped, and if I if I just sit here, they're gonna they're gonna molotov me, and it's gonna be all over. So he went for the fight, and he stayed alive even after that, buying time for Dumao to come up with the AWP. It's now all on Dupree here. Twenty seconds for a one versus two. He's just gonna have to go for it. There's no point in faking it out too much. Straight for the bomb plant. He does get that done, and now Lado, don't make too much noise coming up behind. The problem for Dupree is he has no idea exactly where they're gonna be coming from, so he has to go and check. Playing a little bit outside of it. The bomb is planted for him, so he could pop out of hot like that and just try and do it quickly. Setting up a little bit of an angle. That grenade will give up the game, and he's going to get the headshot on Lado. Turns it from a one-on-three into a one-on-one -on -one with that kill. And now just waiting for it. Dumao on the other side with the AWP. He's tapped the bomb once, but I don't think Dupree is going to be jumping on it. And there's no kid, actually. He's in so much trouble. Dupree, he's going to win that even find the kill on Dumao at the end. And that will be a massive round for Astralis that they probably should not have been winning. This is where Dupree, as he hits that shot, he's just like, pros don't fake. <laughs> <laughs> just calls it. It's like he doesn't even flinch. He, he, he's close enough to hear the tap from Lobby, but he doesn't even check. He just completely calls him out, said, yeah, you're definitely going to try and draw me out with that first tap. It's really become a thing, and uh, I'm not buying it. 
So that's the kind of level that we expect to see from Dupree. Going up against players like the li of the likes that are on Godsend right now, I mean, players like Dupree, like Magus, Zipnix, and Glaive, they should have no respect for these players. They should have nothing to fear from them. Those are the kinds of rounds we should be seeing from Astralis, where they just dominate. Without and doubt, yeah. We, I think we saw a little bit out of Glaive yesterday, some, some cool quad kills from him in, to, to, to try and get something done, but mm -hmm. realistically, yeah, you want Dupree he was the only to win. One, right? Yeah, he was the only one who was kind of yeah. fighting. Everybody nope. else was kind of asleep. It felt a little bit weird watching Astralis yesterday. It really did, right? So a one versus three like this from Dupree, I mean, that's that's what you expect at a major out of someone like Dupree. He's been in many times before, obviously, one, one a handful of them nearly. So you want them to be playing at this level. It's good to see that they're able to do it as well. For Godsend, it's not that great news. That was their first real buy round. They need to find a way to recover it. Mm -hmm. They've got the max seven up again. We can all be happy about that. And it's up close and personal. If you turn that corner into the hut, that could be painful. Phelps out here with an MP9. He's so blind and so dead. That was perfect. That really was good. Uh, that's that's uh, one of those feel-good moments for Magus where it's just, yeah, everything worked out. He eats that flash, saw that coming, and now, well, Phelps is going to have that in the back of his head, knowing in the future that uh, a flash can just nail him there. He'll have to worry about that and take that into account with how he decides to hold Zeker in the future. Ooh, free kill. That's P250, nice. yeah. I don't know, Magus didn't even check behind him. It's a good refrag from Glaive, some good fundamentals. The Rosie. Mag 7, there's the play. Is he going to swap it out? He's still holding on to it. Taco with a headshot on Dupree. And we're into a two-on-two -two again with nine seconds, eight seconds. Oh, no! They don't need to fight. Just wait. They can't plant the bomb anymore. They're, if he'd stayed alive, they would have won the round, I think. That is definitely some inexperience on Godsend. I am pretty sure that if he doesn't hmm. peek the hut there, Astralis, they, were, they can't plant out in the open anymore. They have to sort of wrap around, but then the guy on the high ground could just start shooting. That actually probably was a, a one round for Godsend. Yep. And Astralis... That's actually some time mismanagement from their point of view. It should, it should not have been that close. Never mind the two on two, but in terms of time, you want you want the 30 seconds or something to try and negotiate that a little bit better. It could be communication. I mean, that's the other thing that we've been trying to keep an eye on here because obviously LAN, it's a lot, a lot is going to be riding on comms. And in these clutch situations, I mean, you need the experience and the know-how for clear communication, getting the points across and knowing yeah. exactly what you need to do, that comes down to experience and well, you know, Godsense, they've they've really had a good showing so far. At least, you know, as far as the team is concerned. And, you know, like I said, Taco, Phelps, these guys kind of on that redemption arc trying to bring these new players up and show what the resilience scene is capable of. I mean, it's the most represented country at the major, isn't it, Brazil? We've got so many Brazilian players well, here. Yeah, NA has just become SA, hasn't it? Yeah. Taken over. Yeah, oh, Liquid and even EG, you know, it's like half of them are European now. Yeah, that's how, that's how it works. They've even started taking over Liquid. It's fallen. <laughs> <laughs> one day, one day it's going to happen. Nice enough Molotov to rain down on top of the hut. Forces Lado to move off that position. Still, still no rounds being picked up by Godsend, although they've been close a couple of times. Stranders have managed to outlive them. They're Why are they playing so slowly? This 35 seconds, and they're making the run down secret now. The upside is there are pretty much no nades left on Godsend, so, so they can't really do much. Taco burns alive. That is a problem. I'm not even sure how that happens, but somehow it does. Phelps is going to be traded there for Dupree. But they're going to get the bomb down with 19 seconds. It's a three on four, and again, they don't have any grenades to really retake with. So it's almost at the point where you just call a save right now, and they will. Yeah. It's such a weird round. Even our observers don't know where to go. Yeah, I just it's like uh, I think it's gonna, I think it's the action's gonna be down here, maybe. And well, I mean, there was the lurk from Dupree. He got traded. He picked up one of those kills on the rotators. But yeah, no, that's a uh, like Astralis managed to thread that needle with 30 seconds on the clock, where at that point you're just not allowed to have any kind of. You can't hit a speed bump. You have to be able to just cruise onto the bomb site without waiting. Otherwise, you're not going to have any room to maneuver like we saw in the round previous. So I feel like Astralis are kind of getting away with murder in a couple of these rounds. The round prior to this one and then this one here where, you know, they're, they're cutting it pretty close. And if Godson are able to put up any kind of fight, they could be ending Astralis or at least making life really difficult for Astralis. Without a doubt, there's a world in which 
they do run into a smoke or a Molotov or, or even just a player down at the, at the bomb site that they have to stop and fight for a little bit. Yeah. Maybe that could buy time for one of the ramp players to start. I mean, they, they, they just they, they threaded the needle so well. They just ran into the B-bomb site. There's no one there to get the defuse down. 6-0 in favor of Astralis. Much more the kind of Astralis that, you know, that we're kind of all wanting to see. I don't know about oh, yeah. all, but... Yeah, not all of us, but, uh, you know... There's something about Astralis at the Major, you, 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 at least you want them to put up a fight, right? I feel like it would be disappointing if they just got completely knocked out through 3 without even having, you know, being competitive. That would just feel odd to well, me at the very least. Without a doubt. I mean, they are the Major Champs, and to see them get knocked out first round like this would be a disaster, especially because this is going to be... I mean, the playoffs will be played off in front of a Scandinavian audience primarily because it's going down in Stockholm. True. So you know there's going to be some Danes there. You know that they're going to be wanting to watch Astralis play on the stage. And if Astralis can't make it, that's going to be that's going to be rough. Nice defense here from Phelps. Well done on the CT side. Two kills for him, holding the yard. Super confident in, in fighting in that gap. Even with the M4. And it's the M4A4, by the way. What, they, have a, they have a couple of them, actually, on that CT side, which is a, kind of a rarity nowadays. Good kill from Lucky. I haven't seen too much out of him yet at the major, but that was a that was a good read. And again, they're going to make their way down this time. They have about 10 seconds more than last time, and that actually does make a difference, believe it or not. They're going to be checking everywhere. It's a three on four, but they should be able to get the bomb plant down here if they're quick with it. Yeah, that smoke should do it. Now they're starting to get into the ramp a little bit more. Nice oh. shot from Lucky to take down Phelps. AWP probably not needed. He was already low. That nade will really do a lot of damage. Sip with a good flick. Oh, and he's tearing them apart. Barton, the only one left alive. One versus three. And how do you get back into this round? There are so many corners to check in this bomb site. If you have to find Lucky with that AWP, does not have a smoke to block him off either. Almost impossible to get the job done here. Sip is still alive and fighting as well. And he's just hard to hit. He's moving all over the place. And Barton, he's going to go down to Sip. Good triple from him. Good double from Lucky. And mm -hmm. a three versus four being won by Astralis. And and Lucky was also coming. Like, they were going to be done with that kind of playing around. Lucky was rotating over to just double yeah. peek with Zip. So he was on borrowed time. It wasn't really going to pan out nicely for him there on that retake attempt. But, I mean, sometimes you, eventually you kind of just have to start making plays. When you're down 0-6 and, and you have a chance in a 1v2, you got to go for it and just say, okay, maybe I can pull off something crazy here because... It's just starting to slip away from Godsent now. Seven rounds in a row for Astralis on the T side. So as far as this first half is concerned, they're going to be pretty happy now, no matter what. Any more rounds than this, and it's just gravy. But, Anders, we were talking a little bit about this yesterday, where teams can get complacent, where they start to pull ahead, they start to get these leads, and then maybe they start yeah. feeling just a little bit too comfortable. They start, you know, cutting some corners here or not feeling as sharp on some of these duels. And we'll see if that's going to happen to Astralis, if they're going to be a team that's going to... If there is a team that that. That, that that should never happen to. You think it would be Astralis? It's got to be, right? You think about who's behind them as well in Sonic, right? Mm -hmm. I just, I assume that if any kind of mood like that starts to develop on this team, he's going to be so quick to call like a timeout and get everyone to chill out because yeah. he's just not going to accept that kind of a thing. I think that's that's where the, the professionalism lies in, in that sense. This is a good round so far. They check pretty much every corner. They managed to win the fight over at ramp through the smoke, and now it's just Phelps with the MP9. So this is about to be 8-0 and in favor of Astralis. This is a ridiculous round. This is their map pick. It's worth pointing out. Phelps actually being forced to reveal himself there by the Molotov, so that's unfortunate. Oh, and he probably could have had that kill. I don't know where the bullets went, but not into Lucky. The save. <laughs> just strange. 8 and 0 in their favor. Man, what a start. Even if it's even if it's their map pick. Godsend, they've had a couple of opportunities to win, even some fairly unlikely rounds mm -hmm. where they just had a Mag 7 and a scout and some pistols, but but they haven't actually done it. So getting close is not going to cut it. That's actually a very good point you bring up here. That it's a good reminder. You guys can see at the top of your screen that this is in fact Astralis's map pick and that uh, Godsend got to determine the last two uh, picks. Uh, no, they didn't. They got to pick the they got to pick the second map. A different veto system here uh, at the major. True. That's right. So, Strauss would have gotten the first. Vertigo will come up second for Godsent, and uh, then Inferno to decide. If we get there, yeah. It looks at the minute like it's going to have to be Godsent convincing us on Vertigo that mm -hmm. they have something cool to show us there. I know Vertigo is, it's kind of in the map pool now for a bit. I still think of it as a new map, and I, <clears throat> I think yeah, there's right. lots of tricks and lots of weird things that people just haven't tried yet. So, so you know, I realize 
maybe people just think, no, it's kind of old news now. If there's a map that people would have prepared for for the Major to come up with something wild, it's a really good candidate for that kind of a thing. That, and obviously Ancient as well. But um, Godsend's going to be one of those teams that could use that sort of thing. The element of surprise, yeah. have something special on a map like that, could get them through a few key rounds, and that could completely turn the game on its head and give them a chance at winning it here in this best of three against Astralis. Cool little flashbang that actually lands on top of the vents to try and just make it a bit more obscure. It's obviously very audible, but um, but yeah, hard to see. Nice shot from Megis. Oh, oh they're in trouble once again, aren't they? Taco, if that would have been an HG instead of a Molotov, he probably would have been dead. Phelps to get a kill, though. Sit covering the back line, and he stops the defuse, or stops the bomb plant. He doesn't want to try and follow through. They're going to go up instead. They're just escaping the bomb site because Sip won that fight. What a call from Astralis. Godsend are now on the wrong side of the map. Having to try and get up the vent, that is not an enviable position to be in. Glaive, he's got to be careful. Phelps is right there behind him. He's going to go down, though. Good headshot, and this is... I mean, this is a really deadly call from Astralis. Hard to deal with if you're on the Godsent side. Although Taco, with a good kill, turns it into a two-on-two. -two. He's so low health, though, Taco. This is going to be so difficult to make anything happen here. And you already have Dumao changing up the angle as well. And could they, they very... I mean, yeah, it looks like they're going to be backing off to try and save the guns that they have. because that They AWP, don't have a kit either. What a snap call from Astralis based off the Lurker kill, just finding that and see, realizing that the A site was open for business and that you had a way off of the B site as well. That is so sick. It is. And, I mean, they make that call while he's planting the bomb. And it, partly also because he's obviously getting shot at through the smoke, sure. so he wants to get out anyway. But, but then, you know, if you had to pull a rotation from B to A on this map, in the middle of a bomb plant is fairly late to make that kind of a call. And I don't know, I mean, God said there's nothing they could do at that point. They had, they had to try and catch them before they exited the bomb site, basically. What a wild world that we're living in. Nine to <laughs> nine to no one favorite Astralis. Why do I feel like that's the beginning of a story here? It's like a J.R. Tolkien novel or something like that that yeah. is just about to narrate for us. Listen, I, you know what I think, so I'm, like, I'm just saying. Living in a meme-driven reality. Reality in quotation marks. Me, exactly. Yeah, no, I know. I know. Meme is a high art form. Truly. Memes Dupree, are. he goes down. And that was um, that was thanks to Dumao outside. Going to be able to hmm. to pick up that kill with the AWP. Good good job. That's interesting. Getting that uh, molly down behind the smoke. That's really going to just slow things down here for Astralis. But then at the same time, Astralis, they still have a really good nade count. I'm surprised to see this much focus. What a perfectly placed flash, and I'm pretty sure he got spotted. They know that he's back here, and so wise here of Dumont to back off and change it up. No reason to hang around once you've been figured out. It's a dangerous position to play in back there. I mean, if if instead of doing the flash thing, if they if they flashed and rushed, he actually cannot get down the ramp in time. They're going to be able to catch him, so... A little bit scary to play back there. Four and five. This is a brilliant opportunity right now for Godsend to finally pick up a round here in the first half. And Astralis have decided to go back once again. Congregating in lobby. Expecting maybe a move for Godsend. Maybe to overstep their bounds a little bit. They don't really need to. Again, they're, they're in the four and five here. So they could just relax for a minute. 25 seconds on the clock. Glaive is going to be showing the shot. Oh, no. The timing. Phelps has to turn back around. He's going to get shot in the back. This is a disaster. On top of the hot. Glaive is finally going to be going down. Barton, though, he'll fall next. Sip. He can't continue that fight. 10 seconds on the clock. They need to move really quickly right here. Lucky runs onto the bomb site. Megas with the kill. It's a one versus two. And they're going to have enough time for the plant. Lado tries to get in. He's going to get one. Oh, but a headshot for Megas. It's another round for Astralis. They absolutely steal it. And all of that from a guy turning away at the worst possible time. And there's no way for him to know that uh, Glaive is about to come around that corner. There's no way for him to know that. But he would have had the early warning system. The sun would have shown the shadow coming around the corner before the actual player model. And yet he turns away right as the shadow was about to show. That would have completely changed the round. And instead, <laughs> we're left with Godsent getting robbed again. Oh, that is heartbreaking. Absolutely heartbreaking. A split second makes all the difference. I've got to say, Lockie's starting to show some confidence. He's in, hit some it, shots. Yeah, running onto the site. Just, you know, that that's not necessarily easy to do. And not necessarily his style of warping, at least from what we've seen so far, either. So, good stuff. Megisk at 13-5 and five right now. And Sip at 11-4. and four. That's 
Yeah, that's one of the duos that you want to really have working here, Dupree being the other one um, to, to tag on to that. So, um, yeah, good stuff. Meg is going to be found by Phelps. So a little bit of revenge for the previous round. It's going to be now four on five. And again, godsend. This is a good position to be in. And again, Lucky coming up with the goods. And he's, he, there is someone there. He's expecting it. Dumao is almost walking into this. is such a good read, but he's a little bit too trigger happy. That's a shame. He had the right idea. How does that miss? It looked so dead on. Just, just the shoulder apart, isn't it? The craziest jiggle peaks. Best chance here. Best chance here so far for Godsent. Now one v four situation for Dupree. Bomb dropped in the open. There's no way. Absolutely no way that they can give this one up. Don't, don't even think about climbing up the, the ladder. It's not worth it. 24 seconds. Remember, he has to get the bomb down. You don't have to fight him before he does that. A little bit of a jump down there. 19 seconds still on the clock, and he has to recover. Again, that's why you don't have to fight him. He has to get all the way across the bomb site, pick it up. He goes for the headshot. Oh, last possible bullet. And he takes him down. And remember, Dumao has the AWP. Now, he did already. No, he actually went back for it. This is ridiculous. Now, back into a one versus one. He's got up the vent at the very least, flashes there, and Dupree misses the headshot. He finally goes down, but from a four-on-one into a one-on-one, -on -one, he almost robbed them of that round two. I actually thought that Dumao had already rotated all the way around, that he was going to be able to... The fact that he had to get up out of the vent again is a nightmare. There's no way for Dupree to know that either, but that is a winnable situation for Dupree. If he had any idea that he was coming up vents, that was a dead Dumao right there, but... Man, oh man, talk about getting around by the skin of your teeth, Godset. You can't cut it any closer than that. But I love to see this level from Debris. Just taking all these fights, no fear whatsoever, dominant. It's exactly what we expect to see from Debris as a hard carry for Astralis. 10 to 1 on the T side. But really, there's no reason for Godsend to take most of those no, fights at the start of the four versus. I mean, it, we have to know. highlight that as well because, and that's probably the nerves. It's probably the fact that they've already lost a bunch of clutches and and have been down to two v twos and two v ones. They, they sort of feel like it's, you know, the the stress is just there. It's showing in their game right now. That would have been one of the most insane clutches, though, for Debris. <laughs> a career clutch, but it doesn't quite happen. <laughs> yeah, truly. 10 to 1, though. Godsend are on the board, and they need to show us a lot more right now. Sometimes, for whatever reason, you just win one round, and you can start to roll in a little bit more. So hopefully that's going to happen to Godsend here, because they need it. Barton almost actually getting the double. That's, that's a pretty good defense. He just needed some more backup there. Mm. Two of them are in mini. Taco's wrapping around. Lucky's holding that with the AW. Oh, no, be, sorry, with the AK. And he's not going to be able to get that. Taco just a little bit better this time around with the M4. Bomb is planted, and this time it's a fairly quick bomb plant. Good flash through. Dupree going to be able to save his teammate, and spins around. Almost gets it through the smoke. That's actually almost a kill, and he gets a headshot as well. It's another quad kill for Dupree here, and an absolutely shocking round that you started off fair enough for, for Godsend, but, but once Dupree got put into play, it was yeah. just all over. Once Dupree got comfortable on that A site, they should just keep hitting A site over and over again, Astralis. If Dupree's going to be hitting shots like this and feel that comfortable once he gets out onto the site itself. I mean, Glaive, throw yourself in there first again to create room, and then let Dupree get to work. <laughs> He's just murking everybody. Look at this. <laughs> Nothing but headshots. So sick. Just clean as could be. 11 to 1 for Astralis on the T side now. And yeah, once again, we're going to get down that squeak door blown off its hinges. Oh. And yeah. Glaive leading the way. Exactly what I want to see. Glaive, just throw yourself in there first and create room for your teammates. Phelps coming through with a little bit of action. MP9, that's the only kill they have so far in the round. They just only had pistols in the MP9, so I guess in, in terms of the output, it was always going to be difficult on this one. 12 to 1. This is such an outrageous performance from Astralis. You, mm. you wonder, where was this team yesterday? <laughs> What's... What's been going on? You're, uh, yeah, that's that's true. Yesterday, we were, I think we were seeing a shadow of uh, Astralis. And here now, everything is coming online. I mean, Lucky, he hasn't had many shots, but he, we only really saw that last round there with the AK. But before that, I mean, he was just consistently hitting shots with that AWP when given the chance, when given the opportunity. So good to see that he's also perhaps getting comfortable here. But I don't, you know, it's like considering the pedigree of the four players around Lucky, 
there is a lot of attention being given to him. There's a lot of focus on him. But at the same time, saying you've got debris, you've got Magus, you've got Glavin Zip. I mean, it should be good. You know, the pressure shouldn't be that crazy when you've got those guys no. at your sides. You're working in one of the best systems in Counter Strike that has won multiple majors. I mean, it's going to be, uh, let's say, one that should be friendly to ease into. Yeah, you, you really have the confidence around. If you, you know, yeah, they've they've been through everything that you could possibly go through as the the, the sort of the core four of the team here. Mm -hmm. So basically, yeah, you should have a lot of confidence in that. It's kind of showing right now. I think he's been he's been having some. He's not got the most kills lucky, but some of the kills he's had have actually been really important kills, important openings with the AWP or refrags to get them back into a four yeah. and four from a four and five. So. I feel like not always just the number that's going to make the difference there. Deep flash to try and set that up, but it doesn't really touch Magus. And Nate at least going to be doing a bit of damage to Phelps, so he's not happy about that. He'll return some 40 seconds on the clock, and they're starting to make their way towards the ramp. And Taco, is that a position? Yeah, he's got some backup now. Dumao has shown up as well. He needs to be a little bit further out, Dumao. Otherwise, he's leaving Taco on his own. Oh, no. There's a missed timing opportunity there. If they had both been there, I guarantee you that setup is way, way better. But Dumao was sort of fiddling around with mm -hmm. his org, I think, at the moment. And he needed to be there so that Taco wasn't the first point of contact because that does not work nearly as well. And now, can they wrap around? Yeah, they're just going to be waiting. If they come up heaven as well, you have to free... This was a smart move, but Dumao's going to be a little bit better this time, and that's important. Barton down below, really good kill, and a follow-up as well. Glaive on his own, two seconds left. It's not going to be the round this time for Astralis. And that is, I think, especially Dumao winning that fight. If he dies, that A-bomb side is wiped out. Yeah, a little concerning, actually, that Astralis are getting picked apart like that when they actually have the opening on ramp. Wondering what the goal was there, if there were just uh, too many cooks in the kitchen trying to... Uh make a play happen instead of just committing i mean i think the the read that they had was was the right one in terms of they knew that dumao would have to come back and check eventually so they're like we'll get the kill on him and then we can get the a bomb so it's just that in with the time that was left mm -hmm. it, there was no plan b if they don't get the kill on dumao it's game over basically um so so kind of an all-in in that sense double up on the t side in the 15th round okay because why not although yeah don't throw away the rounds though i mean Sure, you got all these rounds on the T side, but <laughs> Listen, again, we've seen some crazy things this major so far, and I'm not willing to count out uh, the crazy comebacks. No, this is the major, so uh, really anything can happen. It's worth remembering. But Dupree, we got AWP to back, so it's, uh, it's got some legacy behind it. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. He actually is like, I wouldn't ever really, because you've seen the damage that he could do with an AK. I would never want to take that away from it. He is actually pretty good with the AWP, so. Yeah, that's why I never bought into the whole, you know, oh, Dupree will take over his main op and all that, and it will make it work. And, and I was like, no, 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 no. You, you're going to suck until you actually get somebody. I don't care who it is. Just get somebody to, to take the op so that you can put Dupree back on the rifle. That's yeah. where he belongs. That's where he has the impact. There are just some players that are so good with the rifle. It's you trading them out of that position is almost impossible. Glaive has managed to get really deep in here. This, this, they've been doing this so much, Astralis. They've got, I mean, Magus, remember he was lurking around through the smoke out here. Mm. The fact that he's this far in is 80% of the round won, probably, by Glaive just he's moving up here. Them. A little bit of a failed Molotov, but again, no one is spotting for it. They don't even know, and Glaive just raining down havoc from above. It's going to be a big double kill, and now a two on four as they try and bring their way back into it. At least win a third round here, Godsend, but it just doesn't seem possible. 10 seconds and the bomb is going to be planted. I have no idea how Phelps and Taco could actually do this. Yeah, this is when one is going to be very painful for Gonsan as well, and for, particularly for Phelps. I mean, he's supposed to be watching Yard. He's going to he's supposed to be stopping <laughs> these kinds of flanks from happening. And so his teammates right now are going, well, how did Glaive get all the way up there without anybody spotting him? What happened, guys? And so a little bit of a break in communication. Man advantage still for Astralis. A few seconds left on this bomb, and, well, Gonsan have to go. Trying to get in through mini both of them. And it's going to be a one-on-one, -on -one, which Lucky can win with a single headshot. 13-2 to two in favor of Astralis at the end. That is it's too much of a good start. Sure, but right now I'm like talking about the pistol, where I just kind of oh, hope right. that they do a quick A hit or something like that. Same thing as Astralis, where they don't, they don't let the nerves, they don't get too much time to think about it. They just go and do. Here's a strat. We've run it a thousand times. Run it, hit it, execute, let's go. All right? Don't leave any time for the nerves to set in, because if you, if you, if you sit there thinking about the scoreboard, you're, you're doomed. It's the, the way the path ahead of you for God's sake now is so long and hard and difficult. Uh, it's going to be very tough for them to get a win here on this first map if they think about it. 
Let's see. A flashbang through the windows. I'm assuming, yeah, opening the door, gonna try and smoke off Mini, get the jump out. They still have a Molotov and a smoke on Dumao. They're actually inside of the bomb site without fighting anyone, so it's a full on retake for Astralis. They're just saying, yeah, you can have the bomb site. Wait, they're going down below? Oh, this is so interesting. Taco straight for the bomb plant. This is catching Astralis completely. This is them trying to retake the A-bomb site. No, Maze. This is not right at all. Are oh, they going to be so shocked? I've never seen a team get pulled this hard. This is actually this is so amazing. What a sell from Godsend. They have they've taken the A-bomb site with without firing a shot. They take the B-bomb site without firing a shot. And the, the round is done. Astralis, can, there's nothing they can do. There's not even any point in going for this. They will never get to the bomb in time. They've got absolutely and utterly bamboozled. But bamboozled is the perfect word for this. Don't even know why Glaive is hanging around here hoping for a pot shot. Doesn't matter. You can back off and save your Kevlar. They lit. <laughs> They went to the dealership, Semler, and bought a car, and when they came, well, they, they took it home, and then it was like, it's made of cardboard. <laughs> I don't understand. I just, How did you get it here to begin with? <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. This, I, well, then, that is uh, about as good as it gets for Godsend. Thought that, and I think Astralis were kind of thinking the same thing that I was thinking, where it's just like they're going to hit A quick and just try and get, you know, get going in. And uh, Godsend just completely bamboozle it, to steal your word. I have absolutely no idea what just happened in this round. Oh, man. That is so sick. And well, lucky he gets the spot. And that's all he gets. Okay, so Astralis, they will actually have quite a bit of firepower here. A couple of scouts, MP9. Because they saved so much Kevlar from the last round that they decide, okay, we'll actually just go for this buy round here and see what we can do. Is there going to be any way to take advantage of this aggressive push from Dupree? It feels like Godsent have an idea of what's going on here. And yeah, we should get a smoke. Yep, and now they know. They definitely know. Oh, okay. Trying to go for the flick. That would have been a crazy shot. He's still actually taking some damage out here. Lucky's finally gone down, but Dupree, he's going to find one as well. It does turn it into a three-on-three. -three. And both Barton and Lado are very low on health. They've already been tagged by the scout. Makes it uncomfortable. Magus, he's going to find that scout. He would have hit that shot. It would have been three people very low. They have 50 seconds. That's kind of the upside right now for Godsend is that they're down below. They could probably find a maybe. Well, now you got it? the you got the deagle downstairs. Yeah, that's a two problem. body shots and that's it. Two kills. Oh, he saw the door opening. He knows the smoke is there. Clave just relocating. He's got a teammate on the other side. Going to be a nade to blow a Barton and yeah, he can get into the smoke with the bomb. But does that really help? The bomb's actually not even there. They have to go and find and pick it up. There's the body shot you were talking about, and that leaves Dumao. One versus three. Oh, Astralis, they are they're heartless right now. Oh no. no, oh no. Even the door and the smoke and the chaos and Dumao is dead. It's a headshot from Sip. 14 to three, they, <laughs> they're robbing them. Even the doors are conspiring against I them. I know. <laughs> the unforced errors in the end where you start just, you know, fat fingering uh, the keys and it doesn't work for you. Double hit it and now 14 to 3. Astralis, the force by works wonderfully. They whittle Godsend down. And I like to see Dupree, you know, just out there with the aggression, not letting Godsend set up their own game. It's Astralis dictating what's going to happen in the round from start to finish. And that's exactly what I want to see from a team that believes that they should be winning the map, that they are the dominant team on the server. That's how they're supposed to play. Do not give Godsend any room to start executing their own plans. Nicely done from Glaive. Yeah, they've seen that strategy a million times. They know popping through that smoke at the squeak door is something that teams sometimes try and do. So they just, they pre-fire it. As soon as they hear that, even the, the, the pop of the flash on the ground, they're like, yeah, we're, we're ready for it. Sip being forced back. I don't know if Scout is the most optimal weapon, but I guess, wait, that wasn't even a no-scope. He just actually, he just actually quickly got the scope back again. Crazy. Maybe it could be one here. Two on three. Tech 9 and Scout, they just need to get off the bomb site so they're not just sitting out in the open like this. That's the problem. Barton, actually, with the right idea. I think that was a yeah. cool move. That could have worked out. Oh, what a headshot from Lado. Can we have another one, please? He's got the reload in in time, and yep, he's thinking better of it. Lucky's down there with a kit, so he can't just... He has to play it a little bit conservatively, too. Lado repositioning and ducking out of the way. The nade will almost blow him up. The smoke is up, though. Lado, he's guessing, but he's guessing wrong. And that defuse is going to be coming through. Oh, what a devastating loss. Everything about this is so painful for Godsend. Just nothing can work. He's, he played that brilliantly. 
and just he can't get the right shot for the smoke. That second shot with the D goes just filthy. But yeah, that's the, I, it's gonna be so hard pressed to do anything after that, Anders. And you gotta give it to it. You know, the thing is, once you see that uh, Lucky has a full set of nades going into that retake, yeah. I'm like, it's done. But he's got so much utility to use at that point. The smoke for the defuse, the HU to keep him back. I mean, it's it's going to be so hard to win that for uh, Godsend. But oh man, <laughs> I just I feel it, it, sometimes you do just get beat up badly. You know, Stralis know this mm -hmm. really well from oh, yesterday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But it seems like every single situation almost has worked out to conspire against them. It's actually wild to, to witness. I feel like that's heartbreaking for Godsend because some of these rounds, even if they maybe ultimately still would have ended up losing, let's say, 16-8 or something, it still just is... It's unreasonable that they're losing all of the important 1v1s or 1v2s. It's tragic. And, yeah, this is... Bomb gets dropped on ramp now. Zipnix has gotten that donated. As Vegas is going hard on the flank there. God, he's still got three teammates alive who are fully geared up and equipped. Taco and Dumao have been brutalized. Yeah, Mac 10 winning that fight against the M4A1 is <laughs> actually kind of impressive. But yeah, they are low on health. They're in trouble, and God will just have to ride off this map and just kind of forget about it. There's just no other way around it. Two versus three now. 50 seconds on the clock, and they're starting to make their way to where the bomb is. But there's a bit of a crossfire. They saw that coming, though. But the spray down is there. It